I would like to start this episode by asking Jake a very serious question. Oh, shit. How many Harry Potter spells can you remember? <laughs> <laughs> um, Expelliarmus. Okay. Stupefy. Yeah. Expecto Patronum. Yeah. <laughs> and when Guardium Leviosa. Not Leviosa. It's Leviosa. Ah. Oh, <laughs> oh. Hey, 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 hey. Watch it with the Oz. <laughs> okay, so that was four. Okay. Oh, and there's yeah. uh, there's ridicu- Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Right. Yeah, that's the one that ridiculous. turns ridiculous. Yeah. all the scary objects into... Um, funny things. Yeah, something funny. It's like your fears and nightmares, and then it turns them into clowns. <laughs> yeah. Well, unless you're well, afraid of clowns, yeah, and yeah. Then it won't <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's harder to Bubble remember gum. a lot from the later movies because they just like say them super fast. Yeah, but they all seem like they just take sort of a Latin word or a verb. A verb? Yeah, sure. A noun. I don't know. They just they take uh-huh. a, a word. You know, like. Um, Wingardium Leviosa, like add a flourishy in front, Wingardium, and then like levitate. Okay, Leviosa. I wish I could remember. Dang, dang. Or even stupefy. I'm like, come on, that's just stupefy. Stupefy. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Like he was stupefied. Shoot. It's already just a thing. How do they say those other ones? Like the Cruciatus Curse. Oh, jeez. And that's a when word they're I don't killing somebody. Um. Anyways. Well, you don't want to remember that one. That's a bad one to remember. Okay. It is. Yeah. But you know what I was Unforgivable. <laughs> <laughs> what? It splits your soul. That's true. Um, I was thinking how a lot of these are funny little metaphors to me or like mental tricks that people use. Like when I was thinking of the stupefy. It reminded me of the thing when people tell you to imagine someone. No, in your that's ridiculous. When you're nerv- yeah, sorry. Stupefy is when you like hit somebody. Yeah, that's an attack. That's yeah. different. That's hit him with a baseball bat. Yeah. But um. <laughs> <laughs> but no, sorry. I mean the um, ridiculous. It's like imagine a crowd in in their underwear if you're nervous about public speaking and stuff like that. Like they remind me of mental tricks that people use. A lot of these spells and the ways that they use them. Yeah. The non-attacky ones. Man, I wish I could remember more. I thought I had been like up to six when I was thinking about this question for you. But so why, why, why did you want to start with that question? Well, because we've been watching the Harry Potter movies, <laughs> and I just wanted to test. Because if we were ever at a trivia night, I need to know I can count on you. God, no. <laughs> I know. I feel like we have to watch them all over again. There's so many, but um, yeah, we've been. So I wasn't feeling really good the other, like last week, and all I wanted to do was. Uh, lay on the couch and watch the Harry Potter movies because I had played, I had finished, well, this was months ago, but I had finished playing the Lego Harry Potter video games for like the third time or something. And it really got me in the mood to watch them, but we don't actually have them on DVD or anything. And it was all like, meh, should we buy them on Amazon? Um, We should have bought them as a set, but we did end up purchasing through Amazon Prime. And they were like, 80 bucks or something for the whole kind of collection. But honestly, it was like $10 a movie. So I'm okay with that. But also then we don't have a physical copy and blah, 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 blah. Now I'm just going crazy. But anyways. <laughs> yeah, what a ramble. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I really wanted to watch them. And thankfully you were on board. I think you were in and out um, for the first four. Um, like you didn't watch it from the beginning or anything. But then you said you hadn't seen... What the fifth and on on onward? Yeah, I or think you couldn't I saw remember? the first four movies and read part of the fifth book or something like that, and and that's about it. That's kind of when I lost interest in Harry Potter. Yeah, I never read any of the books. I I had tried reading the. F- is okay. Now I'm actually really confused about this. Is the book called the Sorcerer's Stone and the movie is called the Philosopher's Stone? Because they. I know. They had different names in the UK and the rest of the world. Okay, because I'm like, am I saying? I think it, it was wrong? philosophers in the UK, and then okay, because the they movie is called Philosopher's Stone. Stone. Yeah, and the book is Sorcerer's Stone. It's why? Why? I don't know. It's like why did the US use inches and we use centimeters? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, but anyhow, the thing I did remember about Harry Potter. 
was when they first came out in the U.S. There was a bunch of people who were starting to get really upset about them because they were talking about witchcraft and that's the devil's business. And there was all these groups trying to ban them and it was this big controversy. I think some schools actually did ban them for a while. That's really crazy. It's that's hilarious to me. freaking crazy. Yeah. Because... <laughs> It's a fucking book. It's supposed to what like I don't understand. But you know, now that I watch it, it's it's whoever that pink lady is at the ministry. Umbridge. Or, yeah. It's those type of people who want to ban the book. Yeah. As we watch this whole series, it actually it's kind of hilarious as we watch anything, like well, yeah, even stuff like Star Wars and, and the Harry Potters and all these, the same struggle that I think I now know that I do see playing out especially through the pandemic and how people reacted to that. Um, these seem to mirror a lot of that. Like they tell you how people react, react. Like there's a type of person who wants control and law and order and tell people what to do and everything's the same and it's all nice and makes sense and it's all pure, you know, pure to their vision and stuff. And then there's other people who are like, do whatever the hell you want. It all makes sense. And like, just don't be a dick and, and it's good. <laughs> yeah. Like it's the really Ministry of Magic, yeah. they they um, were basically saying Voldemort was not coming back. Like he did not come Don't back. Say his name. Don't say it. <laughs> 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 Anyways, uh huh. So and so it's been fun. It's been a really long time since I've seen any of them too. So yeah, we and are. I miss, I miss Richard Harris. That's what I missed about the first ones. He was the guy who played the original Dumbledore in the first two yeah. films. Yeah, two films. Yeah, he he yeah. And then it's, he passed away, and then, was replaced with Michael Gambon. Yeah, who he do, I think he does a good job, but he's drastically different. He did really good. I will say I do like him, but I just miss Richard Harris and wish yeah. I could have seen him do it. Um. But shout out to Michael Gambon. You did really excellent. I still love your Dumbledore. Yeah, it's it's funny to watch how uh, how everything changes, you know, in the movies too. Um the, like the sets. Yeah. And scenes <laughs> and the creatures. You were pointing out at the goblins the other day. Oh, I was so pissed <laughs> off actually cuz we hadn't really seen like the goblins from it's Gringot Gringotts Bank, I think that's what it is. Um since like the first one. Mm -hmm. And in the first one they're all the same. They all look the same and they all have long ears and it's just the same. And then this one you get there and they're all like they're all different. They have different hair colors. They all have a little bit more of a, a unique Some are pudgy, some are thin, some it's have stupid. Thick and they all look like, just like and... office people, big yeah. people or whatever. <laughs> which just made me mad because I didn't. I don't like that. That was a drastic change in looks. And if you hear that in the background, it's our new kitty Luna. But we'll talk about her in a bit. <laughs> and no, we did not mean to um, name her after one of the characters of Harry Potter. But it just seemed to work out that way. That is funny. She's playing with a toy. Um, yeah. So so that that I, that I just thought was silly. Please just keep it all the same. Um, anyways, so we are at the last, like, two hours or something of the Deathly Hollows part two, and Jake is just, <laughs> Jake's funny, because he's like, oh no, spoiler alert, if no, anybody has ever seen Harry Potter, it. I'm not spoiling it for you, because I don't remember, but. Don't spoil it for people. Oh, you know, why? Do it without spoiling. Somebody, there were some sad things that happened, and they made me really sad in the movie. And and Jake's questioning uh, everything. Yeah, and now the whole movie just makes me bummed out. So I absolutely have to see Revenge. And then I need to know what happens with Snape. Yeah. I don't know. There's just some questions that they sunk into me. Yeah, like, well, I need and, these answered. And the part one of Deathly Hollows is very vague. You know, it doesn't answer a lot of questions it just sort of like skips a, it skips a lot it jumps from scene to scene a bit and it doesn't really explain a lot so we got we got to see what happens <laughs> anyways that's the beginning of their podcast i just want to talk about harry potter yeah so we've been watching that it's been fun we've and been then, watching it since friday last week and then we've been watching these cats which i think is the bigger part of our episode here we're going to talk about cats and living yes. with cats 
and talk to you about our new little cat, Luna. Yes. We have a new kitty. She is nine months old, and her name is Luna. We got her from the Pisces Pet Emporium here in Calgary through the uh, Cats Home Association Foundation. Um, uh, We applied for her. We had a, I guess, we'll call it an interview so that she, to see if she, we were the right people for her. I called it a meet and greet. I'm going to say interview. Um, <laughs> That's too same formal. Thing. And, um, we got locked in a room together and see if we liked each other. Yeah. It's, and it, it went well, uh, obviously. <laughs> With a stranger. Obviously. And then we were able to pick her up the next morning. But more importantly, why did we get a cat? Okay. We got a cat for our cat. <laughs> we got a cat for honey. Well, we got a friend for Honey because, you know, we do work during the day. Um, Even though Jake works from home, you know, he's still working. And Honey just, um, you know, needs some extra attention and love. And it felt like we weren't able to give her enough. And she's super playful and, you know, wants to play all the time. So we thought a friend would be perfect for her. And we also... And she always wants to be really close, which is really adorable a lot of the time. But sometimes, especially when I'm working or making music or need to focus or and we just figured, need some alone, quiet time. Yeah. We figured also this would be <laughs> the best to time. She right up on your chest. Yeah. Because we've only had her for, we've only had honey for three, about three months. Do you, are you looking at that like you need to take the toy away? <laughs> I, I don't know. I hope it doesn't annoy you, listener, but she's having um, too much fun. I yeah, feel bad we, taking it we've had Honey for about three months, so we thought this would be the better time to get another cat so that, um, you know, it would be easier to integrate them. Yeah, and they're close enough in age. We don't know Honey's exact age, but we somewhere, think it's so- although this little Luna is a lot more energetic and rambunctious, <laughs> she loves yeah. to run laps up and down the house in the morning. Oh, yeah. She's got the zoomies and she just literally, she does, she does like a da- like dash, dashes back and forth from the front door to the studio. She runs everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everywhere's a run. <laughs> you know what's cool too? Um, she's really funny. She's actually talks a lot. Like she's super chatty and it, okay. So when we first yeah, got she her, say? she, um, we had to, uh, put her in the studio um, you know, with all the stuff she needed to, so that she could, um, you know, get used to. And it, it only took, I would say maybe 24 hours for her to come around. And then I finally got her to come out and like, um, hang out with me in the studio. And then later that, or the next day is when she came out from, of the room and she does not like to be locked up. She needs to be around and exploring and see people and yeah, she doesn't like to be alone. Not at all. So she's actually So we've been doing what we call a gradual introduction. Which this is something I have never done with any cats. Yeah, me either. Me either. But it was something that they recommended because they said she does well with other cats so long as there's a gradual introduction. Which means you have to keep them separated for a while. And then you kind of let them get to know each other through their smells. And all of this can take, you know, a couple of days or like weeks. It kind of depends on the cats, but so you we, sort of feel it out a little. So it's. So what we did first, though, is we separated them. We had Luna upstairs in the studio, just keep her in the one room mostly, because she was also really shy and nervous. Yeah, so she was we didn't want to overwhelm her either or have too much, or she didn't like all the kitchen sounds when we're cooking and stuff. So <laughs> she was safe in the little studio room. And then we open it up and we're like, here's the top half of the house. Like, see all of this. Yeah, and we, we kept put honey, honey downstairs. Down. Yeah. <laughs> so they could be separate. But we would do little swaps back and forth. So then we would, you know, put Luna downstairs once we were, had time to show her downstairs and bring Honey up. And she would smell around and be like, oh, there's a different cat here. And then swap around. And then Luna could come back out and she would smell Honey's space again and all the get Honey smell and say, oh, yeah, there's another cat. And. The last couple of days here now, it's been the, the face-to-face meetings. Yeah, and you know, it's it hasn't even been a week yet. No, they've been doing really good. Yeah, like Luna is super brave. She's actually very brave and confident. And um, it's funny because like, back to the chatting, she 
like pl- talks to her toys. She meows so much and she just meows when she's playing with toys and she plays with toys by herself and it's so cute. But um, so Honey's been a little um, more introverted than we expected. Yeah. Um, But she seems to be lightening up a bit. There's been some hissing, but Luna is also like, meh, And they said that was quite normal. At first, there's a lot of hissing and they're sort of figuring out the power dynamics and you know, I imagine it from a human perspective, too, if some new person just showed up in my house and they're like, hey, I live here now. <laughs> I'd be like, what the hell? Who are you? You know? <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, Honey likes to watch Luna and like Luna also moves quickly. So <laughs> I think Honey is just like, what the hell are you doing? Like, chill out. <laughs> a little bit. I can't tell because Honey would. Well, yeah, this was the hard part about trying to guess how honey would react because she did really well with the older cat that was at her um foster home before and then when she sees the cats or animals outside well at least when she sees the cats outside here she doesn't seem to react angrily or anything she just stares and she's like getting closer moves around or tries to sort of go after them but it doesn't ever like she never growls or hisses at them Mm -hmm. and so that's what made me think Oh, she could really use a friend. But I totally think a lot of the the hissing and growling right now is just those dynamics of like, hey, you're in my space. Like, this is my space. Who are you? Yeah. Well, I think Honey's also just like, are you, are you, are you a nice, are you nice? Are we going to fight? Like, do I have to protect myself? I don't know. Yeah, because she was protecting you from attackers the other night. uh Uh-huh. When you were recording those lines. Oh, and you're screaming oh and- yeah. <laughs> I was recording something for um, something. Uh, f- anyways, and uh, I was like screaming and um, Honey would come up and be like, what's wrong? She was so concerned. And at one point she was on my lap and I was screaming and she like actually bit my face. <laughs> off. I-, I think she was just confused. Like, Are you okay? Like, Meh. yeah, <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> So I think she has a lot of love and affection and protective sort of instincts. Yeah. And I've seen her. um, She's okay with Luna drinking from her water bowl and obviously her eating from her puzzle um, feeder. But uh, we bought this igloo house for actually we bought it for Luna for her to hide in while um, she was in the studio. But honey freaking loves it and <laughs> we have it downstairs now for for honey and luna crawled in there and honey was like no that's mine yep <laughs> she quickly claimed it hey now uh, speaking of some hissing yeah but this has been the first day where we really let them loose together so we started off we had honey on the we put honey on her harness and lead just to make sure she wouldn't run away or like run after her or chase her or do anything too dramatic. And that went really well. But we could tell Honey was a bit stressed out by it and, you know, didn't enjoy it. So um, then we kept doing gradual little introductions here and there, closely supervised, kept them short. And they've been getting gradually better. And one day I had them both at the top of the stairs and just sort of cracked the door because Honey was really curious. And then Luna kept coming up and they got some really close face to face time there where they could smell each other and see each other and there was a bunch of hissing and growling but I think it was good because it got them close and in a controlled way where neither of them could really chase one away or or swat at one another so it was a really safe close interaction between the two of them yeah and then we've just been increasing that now and yeah we were really concerned like uh, trying not to get too involved but also making sure that they don't have like a whole full full out fight Yeah, well, because there's some moments where Honey would kind of lunge or she'd swat that way. And it didn't look, like, aggressive and attacking, but you didn't know how it could escalate. More defensive, I think. Yeah, or even kind of a reaching out. Like, it could be playful, but, like, a heavy playful. Uh, Yeah, Honey is a little bit rough when she plays anyways. So so we just didn't want that to escalate, I guess, was the the main thing. And they've been doing really good, and, and now they're 
we're letting them freely roam around this yeah. evening and afternoon together. I was and- actually upstairs making dinner. It's really hard to get Luna back upstairs now. Now <laughs> I, there's something about I, mean, I think it's the carpet down here, but there's something about being downstairs that both of the cats really like. So I was like, okay, you guys, uh, you guys be good. And um, because I, I know I can see Honey, like she still has her distance, and Luna's really good at respecting that as well. So I went upstairs and I was making some dinner, blah, blah, blah. Was, or I was planning to make dinner. I was heating up my coffee again while you were <laughs> you were still gone. And I just left them for a bit and they were fine. Yeah. So they're getting to know each other and they'll be fast friends pretty quick. Yeah. We'll, we'll still keep them separated at night and stuff. Just we don't want anything to happen. But it's nice to know that it's uh, happening quicker than I had expected. Yeah. And so what are some things that we've... We've learned about living with cats because it's been a while since we've either of us have lived with cats. Uh, what have we learned? Okay, well, let me think with honey. Um, I'm not ready for these questions. Can you answer? <laughs> yeah, well, you got to feed something regularly. Yeah, but that's... That's the first weird one. Man, I haven't been used to that in a long time. Uh, I could come and go and do whatever I wanted. I feel like that's just an easy one. You get up, you put the food in. Oh, I guess, you know, with Honey, though, she seems like she needed to to eat all the time. So it felt like in the middle of the night or something, she'd be like, get me some food. So I'd have to fill it. Uh, I guess I don't have a consistent linear sleep cycle anymore (laughs) besides that i was already getting up to pee a million times at night it feels like it's just extra with cats Mm -hmm. and with luna like she's come and hung out in the bed a few times and but she just because she talks to her toys and (laughs) is running around and super super chatty it's that's been a little bit tough but i think she's cooling down on that now Jake and I had to sleep separately for like three days, so the cats had somebody to sleep with. <laughs> I felt so bad leaving Honey alone in the basement. I didn't want her to feel like she was being punished or locked away or yeah. ignored or replaced or anything. So I felt like I had to provide some company for her. Yeah, but then we left but her But I also last don't night. like sleeping out of my bed too long. Oh, yeah. Well, it's comfier than the futon. For sure. <laughs> And Luna didn't really, I well, she comes up onto the bed and like lays for a bit. She makes her biscuits on your body and then she fucks <laughs> off and then she meows, meow, 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 like pushes some toys around. She carries toys in her mouth. It's so cute. She had a pretty cool move today where she was kicking it around with her back foot and then <laughs> went up with her and then oh, it like yeah. kicked it up to her front paw, swooped that forward, grabbed it with her mouth and then up and zoop, 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 like a couple of. <laughs> You know, false starts on the <laughs> false starts on the hardwood, and off she goes. And I thought that was a pretty sweet move. Yeah, she grabbed her shrimp and ran. That's I'll so take funny. this to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. Um, Luna likes to hide underneath the couch when nobody's around. I think she just, yeah. And then she you'll be like, like Luna. Being alone. Yeah, he, that's for sure. So her her name started out as Twyla. Um, but she didn't seem like a Twyla. I didn't like the name Twyla. And it just came out Luna, Luna. And then Jake had this great idea about what to call the cats. Honey nuts, because she's <laughs> fucking nuts. And lunatic, because she's a damn lunatic. And honestly, <laughs> we didn't even know that until we got her home and she felt comfortable. Because she, yeah, and yeah, she is a lunatic. Like, she's in She's fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, but you have to be crazy with mental problems to be in this house. Uh, that's what that's Jake a, that's says. That's a prerequisite for living here. I don't have here. mental problems. <laughs> <laughs> I have no disorders. My only disorders are you three. <laughs> there you go. There that's you your go. disorder. Uh, um, what else have I learned? Oh, oh, yeah, having to give some, um, giving a pet, um, like, a lot more attention, you know, being uh, more available for that like I had a dog before shared with my ex and he got he got the dog which is totally fine it was his dog to start um and that was like dogs need a lot of attention and so I was like oh cats I know that they need attention but they don't need a lot of attention and then we got honey and it's like give me all your attention play with me play with me 
Um, so that was an, a bit of an adjustment. Uh, we had we grew up with outdoor indoor cats, so they didn't care as much. They didn't need all that. You yeah, know? but there's a simple joy in having the cats around too. Oh, I fucking love it. I'm so happy to have um, Luna. They're both around. Um, yeah, even just their presence. You said they sit there. I don't know. They bring something else to the to the table. And then I like Honey. She'll sometimes come up and like she just has to be in the middle of whatever you're doing. <laughs> sometimes it's annoying, but a lot of times it's also really fun. Yeah. She's like, I got to jump on your shoulders and hang out and yeah. see what you're doing. Or I'm going to sit in your lap. She loves to come jump on my lap when I'm down here at the computer editing or doing stuff. And like today she was, she did that. And then she was, she had her one paw up on the desk and was sort of looking at the screen. <laughs> and I thought it was hilarious because she looked like she was working at the you desk You got to post that on the Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> we've changed, so we've changed the Instagrams because we got the two of them. So if you're looking for it, it's now... Honey and Luna Tales, T A L E S. Like a cat tale. No, like a story tale. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cat tales are <laughs> I. Um, uh, oh, and Honey is super affectionate. Like, she gives so many kisses and she loves to be kissed. She likes to be picked up. She loves to snuggle. Um, I feel like Luna will get there eventually, but right now, all she likes is she doesn't like to be picked up. She did sniff my face recently, but she's been scared of getting too close to the face, although I know she wants to. Um, but she loves scritches behind her ear. And um, when she when she gets into it, she starts to purr and starts making little biscuits on the ground. And she <laughs> loves her butt being rubbed. And uh, I just, I want to snuggle her, but she's not ready for a snuggle. She's super hyperactive. Like she just Run, fucking moves. Go. Yeah. Run, jump, go. Yeah, Play. exactly. Toy. Sniff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, their personalities are a little bit different, but um, I like that. I like, uh, I'm just looking forward to when they get to uh, finally love each other. <laughs> yeah, when they're best friends sitting there licking each other's faces on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, What else? Uh... Let's go. Any, uh, oh, I got some funny stories. What? We got some funny stories. I feel like we've just been talking about that. How about Honey's Grand Escape? Oh, okay. <laughs> so the other day, I went out the side door, and I had, like, uh, my coffee and my keys in my hand, and Honey escaped out the side door. And it's so funny, the way that she was running is sort of look kind of like a frog run. <laughs> and she was she booking does. it to the back, and she's just like, we ran going and then it, before she even made it to the end of the the yard she turned around and she's like no going back the other way so i was able to pick her up and get her back inside that was actually super funny but i was so freaked out she was gonna just fuck off yeah I, well i think thankfully the back gate was closed so I, sort of contained but she could still get out easily. i lost my coffee i dropped everything rest in peace coffee <laughs> oh that's okay yeah that was funny she hadn't done that before but my guess is because there had been a rabbit in the backyard the day before. And she's really good at knowing, like, the I don't, like the layout of the house. So even when the rabbit was outside and it kind of hopped off to the side, then she ran up and she was trying to look outside windows and things and see to the side of the house because she thought it's back there. So my big guess was I think she watched the rabbit kind of go off back to the alley or something. And she thought, oh, it's out there. And then the next morning she's like, oh, I wonder if that rabbit's still out there. Was it that? But I also don't know if cats are that smart. Or was it? I, th I thought that was all in the same day. Was it? Oh, it could have been the same. Either way. Yeah. So that's the uh, 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 honey's grand escape. <laughs> it was pretty funny, but we did get her a new harness and lead, so we can take her back outside because yeah. she has enjoyed going outside. Uh, but I don't think we live in a very safe place for a cat to roam freely. No, and it. I. I I'm. I think the rules are cats have more mostly need to be indoors. At least, you know, when we were filling our adoption paperwork for Luna, they said indoor only unless you have a safe way to take them outside, like the harness and stuff. Um, yeah, there's so still a lot of wild coyotes and 
and um, even Other what do they call them? I think bobcats. The roads. What? Some kind of large cats too. Well, down in Bridgeland, there were some that were in the um, in the alleyways one morning. What really? Yeah. Oh. So there's a lot of cat, uh, like a lot of wild animals that would totally love to snack on a cat. Not to mention the busy street out front. Yeah. Where there's some cars coming and going all day long. There's a few uh, gruff looking dogs up and down the street. I here bet too. those big fucking and not to mention it's like minus fucking 30 or 40 degrees hey out so uh, Relax. The, during the winter it's not a great time for a cat to uh, what are they jackalopes is that what they call them yeah i don't know if those would be much harm i but. feel like well i they they will attack by if they're cornered or whatever yeah anyway. but i think a cat could they could they, they could probably big. handle a fight with those they are big but like a coyote or a bobcat or something no way Anyways, we need a second harness for Luna, but I, I feel like that's like way down the line because she is too go, go, go. She's uncontainable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we'll take them out for some adventures sometime. We're going to be those annoying people with their cats. Oh, and that's another thing. I take so many photos and videos of my cats. Like my phone is just covered in those now. Forget you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's all about the Her cat. Her lock screen used to be me. Now it's the cat. Hey, you and I are on my home screen. Oh. oh, oh. Sheesh. Yeah, but which one do you see first? Cat. Honey in a box. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> okay, I think that's all I got for today. Yeah, I'm actually kind of tired too, and it's getting later, and we need to watch the Deathly Hollows still. I got to figure out what happens with Snape. Yeah. I so, need answers here, people. Hopefully that wasn't too boring for you guys. I know. All right. That's the update on the cats. Uh, hope you enjoy it. If you want to support the podcast and the cats, you know, feed them. There's links if in you them. Want, yeah. If you want to help <laughs> us feed the cats, you can go to our Patreon. <laughs> Become a patron. Oh, man. Don't let just... the adoption people hear that. What? They can't feed their cats? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we would feed our cats before ourselves just so everybody knows <laughs> all right thanks for listening and tune in next week for another grand episode of paradigms <laughs> i don't know i can't right. make sounds bye